Back in 2007, Britain's Got Talent was airing its first season. It was a show designed to unearth extraordinary talents. When a seemingly ordinary mobile phone salesman named Paul Potts stepped onto the stage, nobody could guess what would happen next. Little did the world know that this unassuming figure, whose voice was often his only solace in the face of adversity, would rise to become the quintessential ordinary hero. Sixteen years have passed since that fateful first season of Britain's Got Talent, and in that time, Paul has achieved what many could only dream of. Join us as we tell you what really happened to Paul Potts from Britain's Got Talent. Paul was born on the 13th of October 1970 in Kingswood, Bristol. He was raised in the Fishponds area by his parents. His father Roland worked as a bus driver, and his mother Yvonne was employed as a supermarket cashier. Paul grew up with two brothers and one sister. During his formative years, Potts attended St. Mary Redcliffe and Temple School, where his passion for singing blossomed. He also participated in the choir at Chester Park Junior School and lent his voice to various church choirs in Bristol, including Christchurch. Since childhood, he found solace in his singing. Despite being an ordinary schoolboy who had encountered bullying in his youth, he entered the workforce, often in roles related to supermarkets and retail. After completing his schooling in 1987, Potts took on a series of jobs, including positions at Waitrose and Tesco. He may have also worked part-time at Debenhams. Coming from a modest background, Paul's early work experiences mirrored his humble beginnings. In 1993, Paul Potts achieved a Bachelor of Arts Honours degree in Humanities from the University of Plymouth, St. Mark and St. John. You may be surprised to learn this, but Paul was also in politics for a while. In 1996, he ventured into politics and won a council by-election to represent the Eastville Ward of Bristol City Council as a member of the Liberal Democrats. But soon his life took a different turn when he met his future wife. Paul Potts' love story with his wife, Julianne, began in the early days of the internet. In 2001, Paul and Jules met in an internet chat room, sparking a connection that transcended digital borders. After their initial online connection, Paul and Jules arranged to meet in person, and their bond deepened. Their love and connection were undeniable, and they decided to take the next step in their relationship. In May 2003, the couple exchanged vows and were married, solidifying their commitment to one another. Throughout their journey together, Paul has often spoken affectionately about his wife, highlighting the vital role she plays in his life. He has humorously noted that Jules has a knack for finding amusement in his quirks and idiosyncrasies, often laughing at him more than he laughs at himself. Her laughter and support have helped keep him grounded and authentic in the face of his rising fame. Paul and Jules' relationship has been enduring, with Jules standing by his side through the various phases of his career and life. Their strong connection has been unwavering, and Paul has expressed that Jules will always be an integral part of his life. Despite their deep desire to have children, the couple faced financial challenges that prevented them from expanding their family. The reasons for not having children have not been publicly disclosed, but it is known that they were unable to afford to have kids during certain periods of their lives. Nonetheless, Paul has shared that his dream of becoming a father remains alive. Paul started his career way back in 1999, when he took on minor roles with Bath Opera, an amateur company. In that year, he portrayed the Prince of Persia and the Herald in Giacomo Puccini's Tarandos. His journey in the world of opera continued as he gradually worked his way up to leading roles. Over the years, Paul's talent and dedication shone through as he tackled significant roles in various operas. In 2000, he played Don Basilio in Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro. The following year, he assumed the role of Don Carlos in Verdi's Don Carlos. In 2003, he continued to showcase his versatility with the character Don Ottavio in Mozart's Don Giovanni and Radames in Verdi's Ida. These performances demonstrated his growing expertise and commitment to his craft. Paul's opera journey also included a performance as the Chevalier des Grieux in Puccini's Manon Lescaut with the Southgate Opera Company in London in May 2003. He extended his experience by singing with a small ensemble from the Royal Philharmonic, captivating an audience of 15,000. Additionally, he embarked on a soloist tour in northern Italy as part of his music studies. Before one of his important performances, Paul's health deteriorated. Despite doctors' concerns about an adrenal tumor discovered during his recovery from a burst appendix, he went ahead and performed Ida. Shortly thereafter, he underwent surgery to address the tumor. In 2003, Paul encountered another setback when he broke his collarbone and suffered whiplash in a bicycle accident. 
This accident, combined with subsequent financial difficulties, prompted him to take a significant leap in his career. After that, Paul didn't sing for many years and settled for a more stable job. Just when he thought this was his life now, something amazing happened. At the age of 37, he found himself at a crossroads, with his self-esteem at a low point, unsure of whether to take the plunge and audition for the show. One fateful day in his small Port Talbot flat, Paul was engrossed in his work, calculating numbers as an area manager for Carphone Warehouse. It was then that an unexpected interruption occurred. A pop-up window appeared on his computer screen, revealing a full-length photo of none other than Simon Cowell, the famed judge of the show. The window presented an entry form for Britain's Got Talent. This unexpected moment of opportunity tempted Paul. The idea of participating in the show had its allure, and the potential prize for the winner could provide a financial boost for him and his wife, Jules. Their life had been marked by challenges, including a seven-month hiatus from work after a bicycle accident that left him with a damaged collarbone. However, Paul's inner demons of low self-confidence gnawed at him. He questioned his suitability for the show, doubting whether his chosen style of music, combined with his age and appearance, would make him a viable contestant. He thought that only conventionally good-looking people were meant to go on TV shows. Facing this internal struggle, Paul made a decision that would ultimately alter the course of his life. He filled out the entry form, but paused before making the final choice. In a moment of spontaneity, he decided to leave the outcome to fate. With the simple flip of a coin, he made the choice clear. Heads meant he would send in the entry form, and tails meant he would cancel it. As history would have it, the coin toss ended with heads, and Paul submitted his entry to Britain's Got Talent. This seemingly arbitrary decision led him down a path to the audition that turned around his life. On the day of his audition, the atmosphere was tense and daunting. The judges had been stern and unforgiving, with acts facing the dreaded rejection buzzer one after the other. Just before Paul's turn, the previous act had been booed off the stage, setting a discouraging tone for his own performance. Despite the intimidating atmosphere, Paul remained determined. He handed a tracking tape to the backstage crew with a choice that would become iconic. Track 7. Ness and Dorma Dressed in an ill-fitting suit and with a look of terror in his eyes, Paul stepped onto the stage, facing the three formidable judges, Simon Cowell, Amanda Holden, and Piers Morgan. The stage was set for a defining moment in the life of a man who, despite his self-doubt, had the potential to captivate the world with his extraordinary talent. As soon as he began to sing Giacomo Puccini's Nessendorma from the opera Turandot, the room fell into stunned silence. His powerful and emotive tenor voice filled the auditorium, leaving everyone in awe of his vocal prowess. The judges, including Simon Cowell, were visibly moved by the performance. The audience erupted into a standing ovation, and Paul received a resounding praise. This unanimous yes from the judges marked the beginning of his incredible journey on the show. Paul's journey continued with the semi-finals, where he faced stiff competition from other talented contestants. The pressure of performing on a nationally televised stage was immense, and the stakes were higher. However, Paul's consistent dedication to his craft shone through as he delivered yet another captivating performance. His rendition of Time to Say Goodbye was met with a standing ovation from the audience and judges alike. This performance secured his place in the grand finale. In the grand finale, Paul faced off against other talented performers. The pressure was at its peak as he took the stage one final time. Singing once more the iconic Ness and Dorma, Paul's performance was nothing short of a masterpiece. He left the audience and judges spellbound, and his incredible talent and emotional connection with the song moved everyone in the auditorium. The audience's reaction was overwhelming, and he was crowned the winner of the first season of Britain's Got Talent. Even after emerging victorious on Britain's Got Talent, Paul displayed such financial caution that he didn't resign from his job at Carphone Warehouse. It wasn't until six months later that he eventually decided to leave, even though he had already secured a substantial £1 million contract well before that time. During his tenure at Carphone Warehouse, Paul earned a modest annual salary, mostly supplemented by commission. Following his triumph on Britain's Got Talent, he took a six-month sabbatical from this role. Paul's victory on the show marked a turning point in his life and career. It catapulted him from relative obscurity to international stardom, and his incredible talent was recognized and celebrated worldwide. His journey not only showcased his exceptional singing abilities, but also showed the transformative power of talent shows, a platform where ordinary individuals could achieve extraordinary success when given the opportunity. Where everything was going so well in Paul's life, there was some criticism too. 
His participation in the show sparked sly controversy. Some people said that the show was intended for undiscovered talent, and his extensive experience in opera raised questions about whether he was truly an undiscovered talent. Critics argued that he didn't fit the mold of someone who had never been paid for their performances, which was the premise of the show. In response to this controversy, Paul explained that he had never received payment for any of his previous performances. In fact, he had personally financed all of his vocal training and endeavors in the world of opera. His journey, including the Italian tour, was not about financial gain, but rather an integral part of his dedication to singing and performing. He emphasized that he had to switch careers multiple times because he was not earning anything from performing. Soon after winning, Paul wasted no time in capitalizing on the momentum generated by his win on Britain's Got Talent. The album marked a significant milestone in his career. Featuring a mix of classical arias, operatic pieces, and popular songs, One Chance was a resounding success. The album reached the top of the UK album's chart, making him an overnight sensation. His rendition of Ness and Dorma, a Puccini classic that had stunned the judges and the audience during his audition on the show, was prominently featured on the album. Paul's exceptional talent and inspirational story struck a chord with audiences far beyond the borders of the United Kingdom. He embarked on international tours, performing in various countries and captivating audiences with his emotive voice. His journey was no longer confined to the shores of Britain, it had become a global phenomenon. In the United States, a country not traditionally associated with opera, Paul's performances resonated with a broad spectrum of music lovers. His ability to transcend cultural and linguistic barriers with his voice was a testament to the universal appeal of his talent. With his initial success, Paul Potts continued to evolve as an artist. Subsequent albums showcased his vocal prowess and versatility, demonstrating that he was not a one-hit wonder, but a genuine talent. In 2009, Paul made a comeback with his second album, Passion. The musical endeavor was a labor of love, as it was meticulously recorded in both Prague and Stockholm, taking nearly a year to complete. The album showcased a diverse repertoire, featuring songs from musicals, operas, and iconic soundtracks, catering to the very tastes of his devoted fanbase. The subsequent year marked a transition in Paul's career, when he parted ways with Simon Cowell's label, Psycho. However, this change led to a new beginning, as he signed with Sony for his third album titled Cinema Paradiso. This album allowed him to explore famous movie themes and brought a fresh dimension to his artistic journey. His voice brought a new dimension to these beloved songs, adding to his growing reputation as a versatile performer. A special edition of Cinema Paradiso followed in 2011, providing audiences with additional tracks and further reinforcing Paul's credentials as an artist who could tackle a wide range of musical genres. Home marked yet another chapter in his musical journey, where he continued to display his vocal mastery and dedication to his craft. Paul Potts's rise to fame brought him the opportunity to collaborate with other artists and participate in special performances. His unique voice made him a sought-after partner for various projects, and he left his mark on the music world in ways that extended beyond his solo career. Paul's success was not only confined to the UK and USA, he even grew immensely popular in South Korea. When Paul Potts's performance on Britain's Got Talent started to circulate online and gain international attention, Korean viewers were captivated by his exceptional tenor voice and the emotional depth of his renditions. His albums resonated strongly with the South Korean audience, many of whom appreciated the beauty of classical music. Paul's album quickly gained popularity, and he soon became a household name in the country. Paul's connection with South Korea deepened when he expressed his love for the country. He affectionately referred to South Korea as his second home, a gesture that endeared him to his Korean fans. This sense of belonging, combined with his humility and approachability, made him a beloved figure in the nation. He even recorded an original soundtrack for the popular Korean historical drama series The Great Queen Sunduk. His performance on the OST, Is This the Place That You Said, showcased his ability to sing in Korean and touch the hearts of many South Koreans. The song became a sensation, further solidifying his status in the country. Paul also made several appearances on popular South Korean television programs such as Star King and Qualifications of Men. These shows allowed him to interact with the Korean audience, share his story, and perform for a wider audience. His warm personality and inspiring journey resonated with viewers, making him a household name in South Korea. One of the key elements of Paul Potts' success in South Korea was his series of live concerts held in the country. His performances were met with tremendous enthusiasm, and his concerts were often sold out. 
After achieving unfathomable success, Paul decided to share his complete story with no holds barred. His autobiography, One Chance, was a deeply personal and revealing account of his remarkable life journey. In this memoir, he bared his soul and shared the most intimate details of his life, from the early years filled with bullying and self-doubt, to the extraordinary rise to operatic stardom. One of the most captivating anecdotes from the book is the story of Paul's famous shower audition. Before his breakthrough on the British talent show, Paul would sing in the shower, a place where he felt the most comfortable and free to explore his operatic voice. The magic of Nessun Dorma comes alive in the pages of the autobiography. Paul's stirring rendition of this Puccini aria during his Britain's Got Talent audition was a pivotal moment in his life. He had practiced this aria countless times in the bathroom and the car, but it was on the show that he delivered the performance that would change his life. Like everyone else, Paul also struggled with nerves and stage fright. He openly discussed the overwhelming anxiety he experienced before performing on the big stage. These anecdotes humanize the man behind the remarkable voice, making him relatable to readers who may have faced similar challenges in their own lives. The book also delved into the impact of childhood bullying on Paul's life. During his book tour, Paul Potts revealed that he had experienced relentless bullying during his school days, which encompassed both verbal taunts and physical damage, ultimately leading to his hospitalization. The horrifying details of this prolonged incident are documented extensively in his 2013 memoir. The impact of this relentless mistreatment lingered long after the school years had ended, leaving a permanent scar on his psyche. For Paul, the effects of bullying are not something that one can simply survive and then forget. He acknowledges that the lasting consequence of such experiences are profound and enduring. The enduring impact of bullying becomes intertwined with one's identity and leaves an indelible mark. Confidence in particular takes a severe blow, affecting not just the past, but also shaping one's present and future. Interestingly, some of the individuals who had been involved in the bullying during Paul's school days have, over time, come forward to express remorse and seek forgiveness. Lucky for them, Paul has been more than willing to offer forgiveness in response to these overtures. His perspective on forgiveness is both pragmatic and empathetic. He recognizes that while one can never truly forget the traumatic experiences of bullying, holding grudges can be an obstacle to personal growth and progress. Rather than adopting a sucks-to-you attitude, which would be akin to holding a grudge, he chooses to extend forgiveness, allowing both himself and those who once tormented him to move forward. Furthermore, One More Chance emphasizes the theme of second chances. Paul shares stories of how his life changed after winning Britain's Got Talent. He recounts encounters with fans who recognized him on the street and reflects on the second chance he was given to pursue his passion for opera on a global stage. In the book, Paul unveiled another painful memory which he endured as a teenager. The perpetrator, a high-ranking individual wielding considerable power and influence, subjected Paul to a nightmarish ordeal. In the face of such authority, Paul felt utterly powerless, unable to protect himself from the experience that left deep emotional scars. While the incident itself was deeply unsettling, it is not without a glimmer of hope. The takeaway from this dark episode was that justice eventually prevailed. The individual responsible for the trauma was identified, charged, and ultimately incarcerated for their actions. This legal action provided a degree of closure and vindication for Paul, reaffirming that no one, regardless of their position or status, is above the law. Yet, the depth of pain and sensitivity surrounding this traumatic event was such that Paul chose not to elaborate on it further after its initial disclosure in the book. It remains a haunting memory, a part of his life that he continues to grapple with privately, far away from the public eye. In sharing this deeply personal and painful experience, Paul not only shed light on the horrors of the incident, but also underscored the importance of acknowledging the strength and resilience required to overcome such hardships. Paul's book was such a massive hit that big studios immediately started contacting him to buy the rights. Eventually, his story found life on the big screen. The movie was a heartwarming and inspirational tale that captures the essence of Paul's incredible journey. Titled the same as his book One Chance, this biographical film was released in 2013 and directed by David Franco. It starred British actor James Corden in the lead role, portraying the life of Paul Potts. One Chance provided a cinematic exploration of Paul's life, from his early struggles and personal challenges to his triumphant moments on the Britain's Got Talent stage. The film delved into the various facets of his journey, offering a glimpse into the emotional trials he faced. The movie was a celebration of resilience and the pursuit of dreams. It beautifully captured the power of Paul's extraordinary talents, the unwavering support of his wife Jules, and the determination that propelled him from anonymity to global stardom. 
There was a time when Paul was struggling to make ends meet, but today he won't ever have to worry about it again. With a staggering net worth of £15 million, Paul has got himself a comfortable life. Unlike those who quickly dive into the lavish lifestyle, Paul and his wife have remained humble all these years. He still lives in the same hometown where he was living prior to becoming a public figure. His constant philanthropic efforts show his dedication to making a positive impact on the lives of others. His charitable endeavors go beyond his celebrated operatic career, demonstrating his compassion and commitment to various causes. One notable contribution is his involvement in supporting children's charities. Paul has consistently advocated for organizations that focus on enhancing the well-being of children. He has actively participated in fundraising events, benefit concerts, and charity galas, utilizing his talent and fame to raise funds and awareness for these vital causes. Moreover, Paul has been a patron of the Helen Foundation, an organization that champions arts education and creativity in schools. This aligns with his passion for the arts and his belief in the transformative power of creativity, particularly among young students. His dedication to the Helen Foundation underscores his commitment to nurturing artistic talent in the next generation. In addition to his work with children's charities and arts education, Paul has also dedicated his time and resources to supporting cancer charities. Having experienced his own health challenges, including a burst appendix, he understands the importance of healthcare and the struggles faced by those dealing with illness. He has lent his voice to fundraising events and awareness campaigns for cancer research and patient support, furthering the cause of health and well-being. Paul's humanitarian efforts extend to his support for disaster relief and refugee crises. He has used his platform to draw attention to these critical issues and encourages his fans and followers to contribute to humanitarian causes. One notable act of generosity is Paul's contribution of over £48,000 to a charity with a mission to construct a rehabilitation center in Swansea. This significant donation underscores his dedication to improving the well-being of individuals and the communities they belong to. His financial support for the Rehabilitation Center project showcases his compassion and commitment to making a tangible difference in the lives of those in need. In addition to his monetary contributions, Paul embarked on an extraordinary journey that involved walking from South Wales to London, with a unique twist that included a detour through South Korea. This incredible feat wasn't a mere adventure, but a deliberate effort to raise funds for SOS Children's work with orphans in Haiti. His determination to traverse such a challenging path serves as a testament to his unwavering commitment to helping those less fortunate. Through this arduous journey, he exemplified his willingness to go to great lengths, both figuratively and literally, in support of a charitable cause. Paul Pont's story of triumph over tribulations and his commitment to staying noble serve as a source of inspiration for others.